When state executive officials refused to certify him the winner of states he lost, he applied more pressure. When state legislators refused to go back into session and appoint Trump electors, he amped up the pressure yet again. You could also do what the Florida legislature was prepared to do, which is to adopt a slate of electors yourself. I don't think it's just your authority to do that, but quite frankly, I think you have a duty to do that, to protect uh, the, the integrity of, of the election uh, here in Georgia. The January 6th committee showing through depositions and evidence just how Donald Trump tried to use state legislatures to overturn the 2020 election, which he lost. Now the United States Supreme Court could help him set the stage for round two, taking up a case involving a fringe constitutional theory, the independent legislature theory, which could put democracy as we know it on the line. New York Times writes this, quote, in taking up the case, the court would upend nearly every facet of the American electoral process, allowing state legislatures to set new rules and potentially create a chaotic system with differing rules and voting eligibility for presidential elections. Protections against partisan gerrymandering established through the state courts could essentially vanish. The ability to challenge new voting laws at the state level could be reduced. And the theory underpinning the case could open the door to state legislatures sending their own slates of electors, which, of course, as you all know, is exactly Trump's plan. Let's bring in Mark Elias. He is the founder of Democracy Docket and a partner at Elias Law Group. His law firm is the lead counsel on that upcoming Supreme Court case we just told you about. Um, Mark, this seems so pipelined directly from not the conservative right, but the Trump MAGA right. How does this end up before the Supreme Court? So, Nicole, that's the question I think we're all asking ourselves, is how did a theory that has never been adopted, has been rejected, and frankly, as you said, you know, is really been viewed as kind of an out there fringe idea, how did that all of a sudden migrate itself to the centerpiece of a case that will be heard next term by the United States Supreme Court. And it should worry everyone who cares about free and fair elections that this case is being treated seriously and that those of us who are fighting to protect democracy need to treat it as such. Can you just articulate the stakes if this wackadoo theory is, because um, I, I mean, I think if you go back to the Texas abortion law, which had vigilante enforcement, which was unheard of, there was a fear, but there was a real sense that it was too crazy, too out there. It is the law of the land in Texas. I mean, just um, tell us what would happen if they were to prevail. Yeah, so at, at its core, what this theory says is that because the Constitution uses the term uh, state legislatures when talking about the timing, the place, and the manner of holding federal elections, that it literally means just the legislature, not the state courts, and perhaps not even the governor, uh, that whatever the legislatures want uh, is the beginning and the end of the story. And that's crazy, right? The, like, whether you look at it from a standpoint of common sense or you look at it, frankly, from a historical originalism standpoint or from the standpoint of, of stare decisis and precedent, this kind of theory that would cut out of the, the process, the state court system, um, has no basis in fact or in law or in history. And if you did that, you would essentially revert to a system where Republican-controlled legislatures could, on their own, decree that this is a voting law or this is a right or this is the method by which um, uh, things are going to happen in their state. Well, and we know that states are moving in this direction on their own. The Georgia law cuts out uh, the Georgia Secretary of State. Some states are already moving in this direction. W what would the motive be? Why would the Supreme Court do this? Well, look, what they'd be cutting out are the state courts upholding their state constitutions. The provision that the Republicans are challenging in North Carolina is a, prov is a provision of the North Carolina Constitution that guarantees free and fair elections, okay? And they are saying that the state Supreme Court cannot adopt and use that clause when judging a, a law passed by the state legislature. Well, guess what? 
many, many state constitutions, more than half of the state constitutions have similar clauses because citizens, when states joined the union, were entitled, are entitled to a Republican form of government, which has been understood to mean a form of government where there are free and fair elections and where courts protect the rights of citizens. If we take the state courts out of that equation, then you will see legislatures being able to pass whatever kind of laws they want without the state courts being able to weigh in. We used to speak all the time about the push for federal voting rights legislation. Um, that seems to be a, a, a sad, have come to a sad end, where without filibuster reform, there was no federal voting rights legislation. Where are you on sort of um, deeply concerned breaking glass in case of emergency to mildly optimistic. Where are you on the spectrum right now? I'm at least a deeply concerned. Look, Nicole, you and I did have these conversations. I said in in January that it was not optional for Congress to pass uh, comprehensive voting rights legislation. And I meant it at the time. You know, the other part of the, the, the clause that gives legislatures the ability to set the time, place, and manner of elections gives Congress the right to override those decisions in the cases of House and Senate elections. So Congress has within its authority to, to head this off, but only if it has the political will to act. And, Nicole, as you and I have discussed, that just hasn't been present given the requirements of a filibuster um, uh, in, the, in the Senate.